Our world is changing, and our world needs new, because new doesn't just think about the world's problems, it cares. New acts boldly to solve challenges, but never forgets the importance of people. It just opens my eyes to a much wider opportunities. New is prepared for today and ready to create tomorrow. I learned about identity, about myself. New welcomes open minds, and different perspectives. The thing that surprised me the most is the diversity of culture here. New is progressive and never stops learning. Qualifications in New Zealand are recognized worldwide. New is the problem solvers, the go-getters, the innovators, the big thinkers. New is a New Zealand education and new is what the world needs. We realize that high school, college, even a first job can seem scary. That's why we created Education.ph to equip them with tools, connect them to schools, find scholarships, learn online, match their skills to courses and jobs out there. So their future wouldn't be as scary. Education.ph
Why choose New Zealand education? Because New Zealand's education system is world class. It provides a multicultural environment. Employment directed learning, internships, and part time and full time work options while studying. And most importantly, New Zealand is one of the safest countries in the world to study, work, and eventually settle. Talk to GSIC, or Golden Summit Immigration Consultancy, for free today, to know the documents and funds required, application process and time frame, and best courses for you. We have been in the New Zealand study and migration consultancy industry for over 16 years now. We have the most number of student visa approvals from 2015 to 2019 with very high approval ratings up to 98%. We have cost effective fees. We attribute this to our many years of experience and expertise, coupled with our inherent focus on quality. We have thousands of approved visa applications already. We're one of Education New Zealand recognized agencies. Most importantly, we are represented by our own in-house New Zealand licensed immigration advisor. So, what are you waiting for? Check out our website www.goldensummitph.com or forward your inquiries to inquiry at goldensummitph.com. We may be stuck at home now, but we can still dream big. Join us in a few minutes for the second episode of Think New, the New Zealand Education Webinar. Grab this opportunity and ask questions to our school reps today from University of Auckland, Masi University, the University of Otago, and the University of Waikato. Our world is changing, and our world needs new. Because new doesn't just think about the world's problems, it cares. New acts boldly to solve challenges, but never forgets the importance of people. It just opens my eyes to a much wider opportunities. New is prepared for today and ready to create tomorrow. I learned about identity, about myself. New welcomes open minds, and different perspectives. The thing that surprised me the most is the diversity of culture here. New is progressive and never stops learning. Qualifications in New Zealand are recognized worldwide. New is the problem solvers, the go-getters, the innovators, the big thinkers. New is a New Zealand education and new is what the world needs.
Okay, Kira Ora and Magandang Hapon sa inyong lahat. Uh, as promised last Saturday, we're back for a second episode of Think New, the New Zealand Education Webinar. So once again, my name is Kuya Brother Franco from Peach, And I hope you're excited uh, as me today because we have another round of university reps from New Zealand to answer your study abroad questions and also join our panel discussion as well. So once more, please don't forget to tag your friends, your ate, your kuya, your classmates, your cousins, everyone you know, please tag them in the comments section below because we're going to be meeting school reps from the University of Auckland, Masi University, the University of Otago, and the University of Waikato as well. Um, so again, thank you so much for joining us today. Appreciate every single one of you who's tuning in. And if you're looking for new opportunities and experiences in this new normal, then this webinar series is perfect for you. And yes, thank you so much again for joining us today. Okay, uh, so everyone, I think you know the drill. But before we formally start today's webinar, let me just quickly check if you guys are ready. So I believe we're going to have a link. Um, that we're going to paste in the comments section below. Um, and then basically, this is going to be the way that you can we can flash your questions during the webinar. Okay, so there's the comment. There's the, there's the comment with the link below. So please check if it's working by uh, typing your school and grade level. Uh, and then that should flash up on the screen uh, once you do that. Okay, so on my count, on the count of three, Please type your school and grade level so we can test out the comment section. Everyone ready? Okay. One, two, three, go. Okay, so just to test this out, I'm going to be doing a few shout outs for everyone in the comment section. Ooh, okay. We have Noluri Bella Wati, who says Kia Ora. Kia ora to you as well, Naluri. Thank you for tuning in today. We appreciate it. So that's shout out number one. Okay, can we get any other commenters on chat? Let's see. All right. We have another commenter on chat. Her name is Ma'an Lacerna. Thank you for tagging. I believe that's your friend or family member, Julie Tampos. So Ma'an and Julie, thank you so much for tuning in today. Okay, I think we have time for one more shout out. Uh, so we have Adrian Natividad. Adrian from is from Mapua. So happy to have you here today, Adrian. Thank you so much for tuning in, and thank you so much, everyone, for for uh, for testing out the comment section. And it seems like we're ready. Sorry, one more shout out for Maan Lacerna, a graduate from DLSU. Nice. We have DLSU today. We have Mapua today. Looks like our comment section is ready to go. Okay. And yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I think we're ready. So without further ado, let's welcome our panelists today. Uh, and let's all give them a very warm welcome. So right now we have first uh, Ben McNally Byrne from the University of Auckland. Woo. Kia ora, everybody. Kia ora. Kia ora. Okay, uh, next we have Brian Bonavi from Massey University. Round of applause, round of applause. Hey, everyone. Okay, then we have Yuki Fukui from, Fukui from University of Otago. Thank you, Hi, Yuki. everyone. Okay, and then next we have Jiang Nguyen from University of Waikato. Hi, everyone. Hello. Okay, and, hello. Thank you, Jiang. And last but certainly not le uh, not least, we have Mr. Joel Angon from Golden Summit Immigration Consultancy. Okay, thank you, Sir Joel. Once again, everyone, let's give a warm virtual round of applause for all of our panelists today. Woo! Okay, so last week we asked our uni reps uh, why New Zealand was the is sorry is. The best study abroad destination and now that we have a new set of panelists with us i want to continue that conversation and ask one of you guys to give me your top three reasons why new zealand is one of the best no is the best destination for filipino students so uh sir joel i think i'm gonna turn that question to, uh, question to you what are the top three reasons why new zealand is best for all of our filipino students out there 
Yeah, thanks, Franco, and good afternoon once again to all. Uh, again, my name is Joel Miranda Angon. I'm the director of Golden Summit Immigration Consultancy. Actually, uh, there are 101 reasons why New Zealand is the best study abroad destination for Filipinos. But to answer your question, Franco, um, I would like to uh, focus first on uh, future focus. New Zealand ranks first among the English speaking countries and third in the world in providing students with future focused education, which gives graduates a platform to have an international career amidst the challenges uh, of globalization in many different fields, IT, engineering, uh, teaching, health, agriculture, architecture, business and management, travel and tourism, and many more. Second, I'd like to focus on innovation and uh, critical thinking. New Zealand teaches students uh, to be critical thinkers, problem solvers, and lifelong learners, which will help them to succeed in their future career and uh, to have that opportunity to have a real positive impact in the world. And third, I'd like to focus on soft skills in New Zealand, when you study, you don't only learn technical skills, but more importantly, you get soft skills, which are very important uh, components in the workplace. Uh, when we say soft skills, we're talking about communication skills, uh, your ability to work in a team, uh, your social and cultural awareness, and that adaptability uh, to be able to perform effectively and efficiently in different roles and sectors nationally and internationally. And there are more, I can go on and on, but I guess we're lucky today because we have four of the eight universities of New Zealand. As mentioned, we have uh, the University of Auckland, we have uh, University of Waikato, we have Massey University, we have University of Otago, and I'm sure they will be providing you with more information later on in their segments. So to all who are listening in, please stay, learn more about New Zealand, and I'm quite certain at the end of this webinar, you will agree with me that New Zealand is really the best study abroad destination for you. I guess that answers your question, Franco. Back to you. Yes, most definitely, Sir Joel. Thank you so much. Those are three great reasons. I especially like the idea of uh, soft skills. I think that's something that a lot of people overlook in the workplace. So good to hear that New Zealand provides that kind of that kind of education uh, for specifically for soft skills. Okay, so moving on. Um, earlier today, we actually asked our student community to send us their questions, both both on the education Twitter and on the education Instagram. So I'm going to go ahead and read some of them today. And hopefully our uni reps can chime in and answer. OK, um, I think we're ready to start. Let's see what questions we can pull up here. OK, this first question is from Hello, It's Hearty. Um, the question is, what makes student life in New Zealand memorable? Um, I think uh, we can have University of Auckland answer that. Ben, would you like to have a try at this question? Yeah, for sure. Um, yep. Thanks, Franco, and, and thanks, Joel, uh, as well for um, your insights there. I'm actually going to build upon a lot of what Joel has, has already talked about um, with, with answering this question. And um, it's actually, it's not a difficult question to, uh, to answer. There are um, lots of different things uh, that make an education within New Zealand uh, and a student's time within New Zealand really memorable uh, and slightly different to, um, to other study destinations, say in Australia or the United Kingdom or the US or Canada. Um, the first being is, is, as Joel said, is, is that future focused education. So um, just building a little bit more from that, currently I, I heard a statistic recently that there's about 65% of students that are currently in, in high schools 
and they're going to end up in jobs that don't currently exist yet. Now, that is equally as exciting as it is scary, um, but an education within New Zealand and, and um, at the University of Auckland, the, the school that I'm representing today, um, you can be sure that we're going to be able to provide you with those skills that you do need in order to be innovative, um, in order to be flexible and be able to move with the times. And you don't necessarily get that um, at some of the other study destinations or, or to a lesser extent, and New Zealand is, is number one within that as well. Um, so the education is one part of it, but it's not just that part. We realize that the students are, are coming for the education, but that's not the only reason why you would study in New Zealand. And there's lots of different reasons that go, um, go with that as well. So the other reason is, is culture. Uh, the culture in New Zealand, we have a, a bicultural partnership uh, within New Zealand uh, between Pakiha and the Māori. Um, so the European settlers and the natives of New Zealand as well. Now, what that means is that it's a um, it's one of the only places in the world which has this bicultural partnership as strong um, as in New Zealand. So that really brings together a really diverse uh, diverse culture and mixing of those cultures. But it doesn't just stop there as well. Um, so in uh, the city of Auckland, for example, is one of the most diverse cities in the world. So we have lots and lots of different people from. Um, um, from all over the world, all congregating within um, within New Zealand's largest city, which is Auckland, which is not necessarily as, as large as, as some of the places where our students will be um, tuning in from. Um, but that diversity is really, really celebrated within New Zealand. So I think that that is something that is a little bit unique um, to a New Zealand education, that we really encourage students to um, bring their whole selves to the classroom and to the to, to work. Um, and we really celebrate those differences. Um, last, lastly, I'd just like to talk about also the environment. So the actual, the actual uh, country of New Zealand is a very, very gorgeous place to live. And that's coming from, uh, I think everybody on the panel today has, is, is non-New Zealander born, um, like myself as well. I was born in the UK. And when I came to um, New Zealand just about, about four years ago, I was just astounded with how beautiful this country is. And I love being able to travel five minutes down the road and get to the beach or, you know, up a mountain and really experience New Zealand's native uh, native bush. So I think that's that's the kind of three different aspects of the education, the culture and the environment is what makes um, is what makes studying in New Zealand a memorable experience. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ben. Um, good to hear that uh, New Zealand sounds like a pretty diverse place. And I think that's something our students would definitely be interested in. Um, so, yeah. Thank you for that. Um, I think um, we are going to move on to our next question. Okay, this one is from Hannah03. Um, okay, tips on how to find part-time work as an international student. Good question, Hannah. Um, I think we're going to turn this question to Brian Bonavi uh, from Massey University. Uh, Brian, take it away. <laughs> All right. Kia ora, kama sta? Um, yeah, well, actually, that might be a pretty relevant question for me to answer because um, I was when I was a student in New Zealand, moving over from Philippines as well, by the way, um, to study high school here and then study university later on. I always had two jobs um, at the same time, two part time jobs at the same time while studying. So um, honestly, I just put myself out there and applied for jobs that that I wanted. Um, obviously, if you're an international student, you can work up to 20 hours per week, uh, more on the holidays, because we just want you to focus on your studies. But um, yeah, maybe a tip would be to uh, pick, you know, apply for jobs that you're interested in. It might seem you know, pretty obvious, but honestly, if you're interested in the job, uh, if you're looking for just a part-time job, um, you know, that interest and that passion will uh, come through. Um, also, definitely take advantage of the career department, especially if you're coming to Massey, we have a pretty strong one. Um, I'm pretty sure my colleagues in the other universities, they have their own career departments as well. So um, there's loads and loads of support there from listings to um, interview preparation, CV preparation, all that stuff. Um, so definitely take advantage of that. Um, and I suppose there's really two main reasons you want to probably get a part-time job while studying once you're settled. Um, one is to earn some money, uh, pretty good money. Uh, minimum wage here is, I think, just under $18 per hour. And it doesn't matter what you're doing. You know, you work for McDonald's or whatever, or you're, you're stacking shelves in a grocery or in a, you're a librarian, whatever. Um, you know, it's you're going to get a, a pretty good minimum wage. Um, it goes goes towards your 
your finances. Uh, the other reason might be you just want to get a head start um, in, in terms of your career. And I would definitely, I would definitely uh, recommend that you do that. I would go as far as if, if you're not in real super need of money, I would go as far as to volunteer my time to get into companies um, that are in the industry that, you know, what you're studying and whatever you're studying. And if you, you know, you want to get your foot in the door there, um, try and get a, a part-time job there. And, and I would go as far as, again, volunteering my time um, mm. and, you know, get your foot in the door. Awesome. Okay. Uh, thanks so much, Brian. Those are some great tips. Um, for every all of the 38 people watching right now, feel free to pull out a, a notepad and a pencil. Take some notes. There's going to be some really great tips here. So make sure you're ready for those. Okay. We're going to move on to our third question. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Vince Aling, Aling Dongan, Dogan uh, O2 asks, what, employees, what employment skills does studying abroad provide? Um, I think we can have Yuki from Otago University answer this one. Great. Awesome. Thank you, Franco. I hope everyone can hear me. Um, Joel and Franco also touched on this, but I would say it's the soft skills that you can get through study abroad that will lead to employment. Um, you're moving away from home, moving away from your comfort zone, and you're pushing yourself to live and study in a different, you know, country. So these this itself, it, it'll help you um, gain skills like adaptability, resilience, flexibility, ability to um, meet new people and make connections. And these soft skills, it's really essential for finding employment. And a small tip that I could probably give is, it's easy to forget, but in your first year and your third and your second year, um, volunteer as much as possible and also get involved in the student activities that's available to you at the university and the institution that you're join. Um, at Otago, we've got about 130 clubs and I'm pretty sure other universities would have great opportunities. So yeah, um, volunteer and get involved is a tip, I think. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Yuki. Yes, I totally agree with that sentiment. Um, you're only in university not too long, uh, so make sure to volunteer as much as possible while you're there. Okay. Uh, I think we have time for one more question. Let's see what we have here. Okay. Ooh, this is a good one. Uh, Lexus Han asks, can I get financial aid when I study in New Zealand? Yes. Very, very important question. Okay. Let's turn it over to uh, Jang from the University of Waikato. Yeah, okay, we have different forms uh, to provide the financial support uh, to our international students. We don't call it financial aid because when it comes to our financial aid, it sounds very American um, and probably it's it more relevant for our domestic students. But we do have a lot of scholarships and bursary schemes. Uh, for example, for our University of Waikato, we are currently uh, running two different um, bursary schemes. We give 20% discount for onshore students. So for those who are in New, currently in New Zealand and want to enroll in our different programs at the University of Waikato, we give you 20% discount. But for the first year of your degree, really, and, and for those who are offshore, like for those who are currently in Philippines and who want to enroll into our different programs, we also give you 20% discount. And when you, when, when you want to be transferred and join our campus in New Zealand, we give you a grant of $2,000 as a travel grant to join our student community. And I think we are not the only, few, not the only university in New Zealand that are running different skin. I'm sure that you know, lots of other university, universities also have um, a wide range of different financial support to our international students. Okay, thank you so much, Zhang. So once again, that was Zhang from uh, University of Waikato. Um, okay, so thanks everyone. That was awesome. You answered those questions beautifully. Um, I think we're going to transition to our next part of the webinar. But for those of you, well, for those 44 just joining us today, welcome to the second episode of Think New, the New Zealand Education Webinar. Um, we're going to hop in right now and do a deep dive panel discussion on the different courses and programs that you can pursue in New Zealand. So make sure to tune in. And once again, feel free to tag all your friends, all your family. Uh, the more, the merrier. Okay, let's get this panel discussion started. 
Uh, this first question, my first question, uh, is for Ben once more for from the University of Auckland. So the question is, what programs would you recommend to students looking for a career in education? Fantastic. I think, um, yeah, you've come to the right place because at the, the University of Auckland, all the, the recruitment managers are split by um, by faculty and I'm, I'm the international manager for the faculty of education uh, and social work. I'm not sure if there's a slide that you guys are, uh, are seeing there as well, um, but um, the, the University of Auckland is um, is ranked, I believe we're currently 26 uh, in the world um, for uh, our studies within education and teaching. Um, so I think it's just coming up there. There we go. So we're, we're the number one ranked university uh, within uh, within New Zealand and number one in 35 of the 40 subjects which are ranked. And as you can see there on the right hand side of the screen, um, education is, I think I said 26 before, it's 27. Um, in the you know the the world rankings there for education uh, and teaching and there's obviously some other areas um, there it's not all that we do we have eight different faculties so the faculty of arts the faculty of education and social work the faculty of creative arts and industries um, the faculty of business uh, health and medical science uh, science and engineering and law as well um, but if we go over to the next slide I'll be able to talk a little bit more um, about uh, the studies within uh, within education and teaching. So for those students who are currently in high school uh, at the moment, they'll obviously be looking to come into one of our undergraduate programs. Now we have at the University of Auckland, we have the Bachelor of Education, um, which is uh, specialized within teaching. So that can either be early childhood education, which is ages zero to five, uh, primary education, which is about five to about 11, and then secondary uh, education as well, um, about 11 to uh, 18. Um, now this is a three-year a three-year program and it's a combination of both taught so in classroom study and then also what we call practicum which is when we send you out to one of our schools to be a teaching assistant um, and to support teachers within New Zealand schools so you get that on uh, on-site experience and that hands-on learning coupled with uh, the the classroom work and the research uh, as well as part of that now the huge thing and the and the, the the big draw card with these courses is that it does lead to registration within the teachers council of new zealand um, so that means that you can then take that qualification and then start officially um, teaching within within new zealand schools uh, post-graduation uh, when you're on that post-study uh, post-study work visa if we just quick quickly flick back to there we go um, for our students who have already got a bachelor's degree now that can be either within New Zealand it can be back in the Philippines it can be in Singapore absolutely wherever um, but if they've already got a bachelor degree and it doesn't necessarily have to be within education or teaching um, we have our graduate diplomas in teaching again these have the same specializations as the bachelor's so it's early childhood education primary and secondary now these are 12 month programs so they're one year in total uh, there are 150 credits Credits, though so they're really they're really quite compact uh, they start generally in about January so slightly earlier than a lot of the other courses within New Zealand um, and again this is a combination of both the taught and the practical experience as well and again leads to registration for the teacher council uh, of New Zealand so you can study just for that one year if you've already got a bachelor's degree tag on an extra year and then you're then um, eligible to then teach within uh, within New Zealand schools now, lastly, if you want to focus more on the, say, educational policy or curriculum development or uh, educational leadership or something, something within education, but not necessarily as a teacher, then we also have our Master of Education um, as well, which has two different routes, either 120, so one year, or 180 credits, which is 18 months. Uh, now, it's a research program, but it does have elements of, of taught courses uh, in there that will lead to um, further studies at the doctorate level um, or within educational leadership or training roles. So it could be working at the Ministry of Education in educational policy. Uh, it could be in curriculum development. There's a whole range of different um, options that, that students can choose after graduating from the Master of Education. Uh, now, briefly, I'll just uh, talk about the uh, scholarships um, that we, the University of Auckland um, 
administered over $15 million in scholarships uh, to international students alone. And the main one that I'd like to highlight today, which is eligible for all of our um, undergraduate and postgraduate taught programs, all the programs that are there uh, that I've just talked about. We have up to 10,000 New Zealand dollars um, for those students, uh, and it's based on academic excellence. So it's basically um, you would provide your transcripts and a letter of recommendation um, from your teacher or an employer, uh, and then we'll then assess that. And I believe that we have 50 of these available for uh, for next year. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an overview of uh, studies within education and teaching at the University of Auckland. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, once again, that was Ben McNally Byrne um, from the University of Auckland. And yeah, if you're looking for a career in education, make sure to give University of Auckland, uh, Auckland a look as well. Okay. Um, we are going to move on to our second question. So um, this one is for Brian from Massey University. So based on our research, agriculture, well, based on my research, agriculture and forestry are among New Zealand's powerhouse industries. So I guess um, what I want to know is, as one of the top universities in New Zealand for agricultural sciences, what do you think, Brian, is like the best study uh, or pathway or program that is best for our international students. Yep. So, yep, I think we're going to have the slides come up soon. Yeah, so, yeah sure. once again, um, yeah, go ahead. Cool. Uh, yeah, you're quite right there, Franco. That is um, one of the main industries here in New Zealand. In fact, that's um, one of the things in common that we both share in New Zealand and Philippines, uh, agriculture and agribusiness being one of the main industries uh, of those two countries. Um, I think everyone here knows that uh, New Zealand is, has one of the most respected food industries in the world and agricultural industries in the world. Um, we share that same passion here over at Massey. We started off as an agricultural university about 100 years ago. Um, and at the time, agriculture really was, you know, the only thing New Zealand really had in terms of what we could contribute to the world. So that's where we started and we followed through. Um, just so we're on the same page uh, for everyone watching, agriculture is obviously the practice of farming. Uh, including cultivation of the soil for growing of crops uh, and uh, rearing of animals to provide food, wool, other products, uh, animal products. And um, to answer your question, Franco, there's really uh, two main parts of agriculture, which is uh, kind of the science side, which focuses on those animals and crops and products and stuff like that. And then there's the business side, which is obviously what drives um, everything, what what drives things to to really really. Uh, high level um, for governments for for whole countries uh, we're going to make money out of it yeah so um we're probably not going to be robots anytime soon um uh, at least if elon musk doesn't have his way so agriculture is probably going to be very very relevant for a long long time to come um so yeah uh, whether you focus on the on the science side uh, or the business side uh, you really couldn't go wrong so we've listed some of the programs that we have over there on the slide uh, if you look there on the right of the slide that Massey provides um, those are uh, some of the things you could study. Um, that goes up right up to PhD level. Um, I suppose for anyone who's wondering, uh, you could do your own research, but just really quickly on uh, why Massey might be the right place to help you get to uh, some great place in your ag agriculture career. Uh, Massey itself is in the top 3% of universities in the world. Um, we have more national tertiary teaching awards than any other New Zealand um, educational institution, which means, you know, great teachers, uh, which is good for you if you're paying a lot of money coming through. Uh, research is good, right? But uh, good teachers is uh, one thing that's really great as well from a student's point of view. Uh, we're the first business school in New Zealand, um, still the, 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 currently the largest business school in New Zealand. Uh, that business school itself is in the top 5% globally in terms of international recognition. Uh, first design school in New Zealand, um, not that it has anything to do with recognition, uh, with, with um, agriculture. Highest rate of student accommodation in the country. Um, you know, that's something to say for when you can come to New Zealand. Uh, but if you can't come to New Zealand and you need to start uh, your studies or you don't want to delay, there is, we, we also are uh, New Zealand's premier distance education provider. Uh, we have been doing distance education for almost 50 years now. So um, even before the, the whole COVID thing hit, we were doing this for decades and decades. And, you know, uh, we're experienced. We know what it's like to, to teach remotely, we know it's very different, um, and and we know how to make it work. So if you have to start remotely, uh, we've got you covered there. For agriculture itself, uh, we're number 28 in the world. 
So um, not so bad, I would say. Uh, in New Zealand, we're number one in terms of ranking um, in a Massey Business School, if you're thinking of agriculture and um, business, which is agribusness. Uh, yeah, again, first and largest in New Zealand um, and very, very recognized internationally. So uh, just a quick overview, I suppose, um, if you're going to study Bachelor of Agri-Science, um, this is where you dig into every aspect of agriculture. Uh, your learning combines agriculture and science disciplines to give you a broad range of contemporary and relevant knowledge and skills. Um, you'll study animals, agriculture, stalls and pasture, um, but also a little bit of business uh, in that degree uh, and decision-making skills. Uh, there's also international agriculture if you want to focus on that, not just in one country. Um, and there's also animal science, you can focus on that as well. Uh, in the area of animal science, you can focus on animal genetics and breeding, animal nutrition and growth, animal welfare, um, and equine science. Equine is um, uh, the branch of animal science that are uh, focused on horses. Um, and then there's the business side. So agribusness, I suppose from, any, from anything running like a large farm-based agribusiness right through to international food trade, uh, this program is really designed to help you gain skills and some business knowledge to help progress the future of your agriculture industry wherever you, you, may, you may go, whether you want to stay here in New Zealand or you want to go back to the Philippines um, where agriculture is big as well. Um, you can see there on the slide that we posted there, that's just some examples that I posted there because coming from Philippines myself, I never really thought that farmers um, and people in the agriculture industry um, were uh, really like wealthy or getting paid well. Uh, obviously, I wasn't really really looking at the right places, but uh, certainly in New Zealand, um, there's a ton of different jobs that you can get both in the agriculture science side and the agribusiness side that um, fetch uh, quite good salaries. And as you can see there, I don't know if you can zoom in or whatever, but there, there's a little meter there in the bottom. Almost all these agricultural jobs, uh, the chance of getting a job are quote unquote good, which means there's a shortage um, in country. Uh, and if you were going back to the Philippines, maybe you're gonna be a scholar or whatever, um, you could probably notice as well that with agriculture being one of the main industries in the Philippines, if you can contribute to that in a big way, because of your expertise studying in New Zealand, um, I'm sure a job will come easy for you as well. But um, yeah, anyways, that's, um, that's, I suppose that's really what I wanted to cover. Hopefully that answers the question. Obviously feel free to come talk to us uh, at a separate time or just come check out Messi and what we're doing in this space. Does that help, Franco? Yeah, that, that was great. Thank you so much, Brian. It was quite a long-winded question, but you more than answered it. So thank you for that. Once again, that was Brian Bonnevie from uh, Massey University. Um, okay, um, we are going to move on now to our next question. So uh, this would be for Yuki uh, from University of Otago. So we actually, Yuki, we've actually received a lot of inquiries on our Instagram about the health sciences program. Uh, over in New Zealand. So I guess with the current pandemic restricting travel, uh, many of our students are actually wondering if they can still get an accredited degree online. And maybe you could share a little bit uh, more about that. Yep, that sounds good, Franco. Um, thanks for that. Um, before I talk about the program that's available at Otago, I thought I'll give you an overview of Otago University, just in case you haven't heard about us before. So Otago University, we're based in a beautiful city called Dunedin at the bottom of South Island. So all the other universities today, Auckland, Massey and Waikato, they're based up in the North Island, um, but University of Otago, we're down here in South Island. Um, I think the slides would pop up. Just the next slide, thank you. So University of Otago, we're the very first university in New Zealand and we celebrated our 150th year last year. We're ranked in the top 1% universities in the world and second in New Zealand. Um, this is quite interesting, but 85% of our students actually come from outside Dunedin. So what this means is that, you know, a lot of the students, um, just like I've spoke before, um, come from outside of Dunedin outside from New Zealand, living away from home for the first time. So the, you know, for these reasons, Otago has great um, student support and various university owned accommodation options that you can choose from. We're also top for completion of courses, as well as voted best student experience for the past four years. Um, another aspect that I would like to share and what I love about Otago is the global aspect of our university. 20% um, of Dunedin's population are actually students and we have about 3,000 international students from come from 
all over the world. And I used to be one of them. I'm originally from Japan and I studied here as an international student. So we have a very diverse community, including a growing Filipino community. And it's the international students that bring this rich culture to our university and the Dunedin city. And we treasure that. Um, I'd like to also highlight that 70% of our academic staff have either received their highest qualification overseas or are from overseas. So Dunedin is a small city compared to a lot of the um, cities in Philippines, but we have a great cosmopolitan, you know, global outlook. And the experience and the education you will get at Otago will prepare you to be employable globally. Um, we have around 200 programs or 200 majors across four divisions. They are arts, business. Um, we have Bachelor of Commerce. My colleague from the Philippines said that Bachelor of Commerce isn't a thing in Philippines, but at Otago, you can do Bachelor of Commerce, Sciences and Health Sciences. And in the next slide, I'll share with you some of the um, hero programs that might be of your interest. So next slide, please. Okay, great. All right. Um, so for undergraduate st studies, students from Philippines would normally need to complete one year of foundation year prior to commencing your bachelor's degree. And um, we have our own Otago Foundation program and the intakes are February, July and October each year. And what's great about this foundation program is that for next year, it's fully um, available online. So you can start your foundation program online and join us um, when the borders are open. Another good news is that for um, the foundation program, we have the Pathway Scholarship available at New Zealand, $4,000. Um, if you're studying at say an international qualification like the IB or A levels, you can apply directly to your bachelor's degree and skip the foundation year. All right, so just as um, Franco mentioned, um, one of the pro um, program that I wanted to highlight today is our health science first year program, which is a one year program that will lead you to health science professional programs. And these include medicine, dentistry, physiotherapy, pharmacy, and medical laboratory science. And when you complete the course, these courses, you will gain a New Zealand registration um, in these profession. Another great news, so for, for these programs, there are scholarships available. So for foundation, we've got $4,000. And for the bachelor's um, health science first year degree, there's New Zealand $10,000 available. And if you do well in these courses, in your second year, there is an opportunity for you to um, claim the New Zealand $5,000 scholarship as well. And moving on to postgraduate study, I wanted to highlight our coursework master's program at the um, Otago Business School. So these are usually between one to 1 1.5 years, but it, what's great about um, these programs are that um, they're open to students from all backgrounds. So we've got master of entrepreneurship, master of marketing, master of sustainable business and professional accounting. And some of these um, courses are also available online next year. So if you'd like to know more, please come and see us. Um, and it was in the previous slides, but our Otago Business School ranked number one for research in New Zealand with the PBRF rankings. And they are one of the most international student-friendly divisions at Otago. So you'll be learning from the best lecturers in a global classroom. And again, um, for these courses, we also have the $10,000 um, scholarship and these are awarded on academic merit. All right, that's all from Otago. Back to you, Franco. Thank you, Yuki. Once again, that was Yuki from University of Otago. Good to hear that there's a lot of options for, for online schooling, especially in this new normal. Um, okay, I think we have time for one more question. And last but not least, this is for Jang from University of Waikato. So we've actually received a lot of inquiries about business and management programs, uh, specifically for Wa Waikato. So, Jang, uh, do you mind sharing um, some program opportunities uh, in this field of study? Hi to everyone. Um, you know, when I visited some of the universities and some of the schools and talked to high school students, not only in the Philippines, but in some of the other countries in Southeast Asia, business, economics, management always come first. Okay? The Asian culture seems to be uh, really interested in studying business and 
I'm, I'm from Vietnam. I'm working for the University of Waikato, but I'm originally from Vietnam. And, and more than 40% of the students from Vietnam are studied business. Okay, I give you a very brief information about the University of Waikato. Um, we are located in a very um, in in the, in the North Island, um, like like Messi University and, and University of Auckland. Uh, we are based in Hamilton and also Tauranga. Uh, Hamilton is about 120 kilometers from from Auckland city, so it takes you about 90 minutes drive. Uh, Hamilton is in a uh, Waikato region and Tauranga is the fifth largest city in the Bay of Plenty region. So Waikato, the University of Waikato is located what we call in the golden, New Zealand golden triangle, um, which is a very fast uh, growing um, economic development in New Zealand. I'll just give you some information about the University of Waikato. We are currently having about 12,000 students, including 2,000 students uh, from more than, I think, 70 uh, countries in the world. Uh, our Waikato Management School has triple ground, which is ranked among top 1% of all business school in the world. Um, we have a very large campus in Hamilton. It's, it's like a park because we have lots of trees, flowers, and we have three big uh, lakes. Um, we also invested in a lot of scholarship and bursary schemes, and so far we have invested around 15 million New Zealand dollars for different scholarship schemes, especially for international students, because we want to welcome more international students to our Waikato community. Uh, we have a very diverse um, uh, students' background and staff population, like Otago University, Auckland University, and Massey University. We have professors from UK, from Canada, from the US, from European countries, from, from many other countries in the world. Uh, we have a very strong link with industry and every year we have uh, placed around two, more than 2,000 um, in-study work placement and internship for mostly for our undergraduate students because we do want to provide opportunities for our students to gain the practical experience and be ready um, after they graduate um, to find a job um, in the market. Next slide, please. Okay, lots of people ask us why Waikato? We are a small university compared to Auckland Uni, compared to Victoria and compared to many other universities in New Zealand. Uh, but being a small university of 12,000 students, we have a lot of uh, advantages. Um, we are, of course, among top world ranking university, and we also have a lot of schemes to help the student to be job ready after they graduate. Our academic staff is very accessible when the student have any problems. They can knock at the door and ask any question, and they are always very friendly to help and to answer any questions and help them to solve any problems, not only life, but also academic um, as well. Um, those we, we, we also have lots of program by buddy programs uh, and we have a big team of working at the International Support Services Office. When I study in, in Europe, um, you know, when I, I, I don't have the opportunity to be part of the buddy programs, but when I joined the university from Ministry of Foreign Affairs of New Zealand, I thought, wow, you know, um, I, I, I feel really at home and I feel like, you know the, the 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 Kiwi people and and lots of international students who have been uh, studying with us are always very happy about the buddy program and about the services that our staff have been provided to them so far. Um, we also um, quite close to many places of interest like Mount Maunganui um, and also Hobbiton movie set, which is very attractive to not only international students but also to international tourists whenever they are um, in New Zealand. Next slide, please. Okay, we have um, many different majors and, and we have about um, 10, um, 10 faculty in schools. 
um, but we don't we don't have the uh, medical uh, programs. We do have schools of health, but it's more focused on the um, community health. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay, so um, I'll give you a very brief information about our Bachelor of Business. We have about uh, more than 10 majors uh, under the Bachelor of Business, like accounting, HR, um, public relations, tourism and hospitality, supply chain, digital business, etc. And it's a three years program, and we do offer the scholarship for this uh, program as well. Anyone who has been accepted into this program will give will be given 20% of fee discount. And after you graduate from um, this program, you will be given um, lots of opportunity to look for a job um, in the market. Next slide, please. Uh, one of the very uh, famous of, of, of our program is uh, Master of Digital Business. Our Master of Digital Business ranked 47 globally and ranked first in New Zealand. And I think we are the first university that offer that Master of Digital Business. And, and uh, we have um, very strong link with industry. Uh, that's why for those who enroll into this op uh, this program will be given the opportunity to do internship in a company that we have established with. And the internship will be from eight to 13 weeks to help the student to gain the practical experience. And also they'll be given the opportunity to do work on the real projects so that they can apply in reality and, and, and give them um, to build the networks um, in the industry as well. And, and this, is, um, this is a program of 180 points and will give you the opportunity to, uh, to study higher at the PhD level if you are really keen uh, to get a PhD degree in New Zealand. And, and there are lots of job perspective after you get the Master of Digital Business because it's quite um, a trendy um, it, 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 um, let's say the uh, 4.0 digital age will give you the opportunity to look for a job and to get a good job, a worker job, if you are a master in digital business world. So but some very brief information about the popular program that we are running. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you have right now. Thank you very much. Okay, Thank I have mentioned Jan. about Bursary scheme already. Yeah. Okay. No worries. Thank you, Jang. And yeah, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Jang from University of Waikato. Mm. Uh, I think that concludes our, our panel discussion for today. So once again, thank you everyone for answering those questions. Uh, that was a huge help to everyone in the comments section. Uh, but yeah, I think we're going to move on. Um, it appears we have a lot of love today for Sir Joel from GSIC. I'll do some quick shout outs. We have Billy. Who else do we have? We have CJ, Christine, Diana, Jill. Wow, a lot of love for GSIC today. So that's perfect timing because we're going to move on to uh, Sir Joel. And basically, let's um, talk more a little bit more about the requirements and application process for studying in New Zealand. Uh, so yeah, Sir Joel, would you like to tell us more about the application process? Yeah, thanks, Franco. I, I, I have uh, a, a few uh, pages of uh, presentation, if you can have that on screen, please. I'd like sure, to talk about it. how Golden Summit um, will help you in terms of uh, the step guide uh, to studying in New Zealand. First of all, uh, you have to be prepared. Uh, you have to be ready for an international study adventure. What I always say to uh, students is to research, research and research. Get that general information because that will be your jumping board into your uh, future career in New Zealand. And if you so need professional advice, you may seek the help of a recognized education agency because why would you reinvent the wheel? where someone out there will be able to help you and guide you with the different challenges in the context of applying for a student visa. You have to also plan your budget. Uh, you have to make sure that uh, you have this uh, investment ready for a global uh, education that you are aiming for. You have to select the right program, the right course, because mainly the reason why you are studying in New Zealand is to complement 
whatever your uh, aim is. If you are coming out of the secondary, those uh, K-12 graduates, you have the, to identify which particular degree is best suited for you. And for those individuals who are already degree holders in the Philippines, you want to uh, further your skills in your particular industry. And most importantly, those who are currently working professionals, you might want to take up master's or PhD in New Zealand. Definitely, you have to identify the right program for you. You have to choose uh, the right school. And this will matter in terms of location, the course details, the internships and the uh, industry uh, training that they provide, which of course will complement your uh, career plan in New Zealand or elsewhere. Um, and then you apply for student visa. This is where your application will be forwarded to Immigration New Zealand or what we usually um, term as the Embassy of New Zealand. And this is where uh, someone should be able to help you and guide you in which particular documents will be acceptable uh, for um, the Embassy of New Zealand. And of course, before um, flying to New Zealand, you have to be ready to explore New Zealand, and that is uh, done by, by uh, having that knowledge, that information. You have to bring with you not just your luggages, but a whole lot of information about New Zealand so that it will be an easy uh, initial, um, initial uh, 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 new uh, few days of uh, when you arrive in New Zealand. Uh, can we go to the next slide, uh, Franco, please? Yes, uh, everybody might be asking about this. What are the requirements? I have provided here the more general requirements. Uh, as you may appreciate, each case will become uh, different from another one. But you have to have that identity documents, um, your passport, your birth certificate, your marriage certificate if you are a married individual. You have to provide an English language eligibility test. Well, the more um, acceptable uh, English test will be uh, your PTE and your IELTS, uh, and the result or the test level uh, that you have will uh, depend on the program that you want to uh, complete in New Zealand. So for each particular level of program, there is a corresponding set of um, scores that you should be able to, uh, to have for the English language eligibility. Then, you need to have an offer a place. Offer a place is that document that basically tells you that you have been accepted by a provider, by an educational provider in New Zealand. The one good thing about New Zealand is that the offer a place provides you with a whole lot of information. The start date, the end date of the program, the investment, uh, including uh, in many cases um, the, the breaks uh, throughout the year of study. And this document is basically your first ticket for your application as an international student to New Zealand. Character check. This is quite important to New Zealand. In the Philippines, uh, you should have the usual NBI clearance or police check. Uh, if you are coming from other countries, of course, there will be a corresponding character um, um, document that you have to provide. And um, the fifth one is medical. You have to be medically fit to study in New Zealand. Uh, if you do not have any um, medical condition that is contagious or medical uh, condition that will require intervention, then you won't have a problem. Uh, and if you want to ask further about medical um, details, we can provide you information further on that. And of course, importantly, you have to prepare your funds, your investment. Uh, in, in the New Zealand context, they would look at the funds that you will be using uh, to pay for the tuition fee for your education, as well as the living cost. Uh, that is the amount of money that you need throughout the study period in terms of accommodation, uh, food, and uh, transportation. Uh, Again, it will depend on the length of program that you are, um, that you are enrolling in. Uh, and this will depend also on the amount of the course fee that your program um, requires. And for the next slide, I'll be talking about uh, the benefits of a student in New Zealand. 
Well, imagine studying in an environment in a country that is safe, uh, welcoming, multicultural, with a family-oriented society. New Zealand uh, has what we call as the pastoral care for international students. And um, the one good thing also in New Zealand, you will be learning not just the Kiwi culture, but you will be learning cultures from all over the world. You shouldn't be surprised that in a classroom uh, in one of the schools in New Zealand, you will have Indians, Chinese, Americans, South Americans, Australians in one classroom because New Zealand opens it, its doors to all students around the world, okay? And it is important to note that one of the investments um, uh, result that you will get uh, out of studying in New Zealand is that you will gain a qualification that is world class and is recognized all over the world. And just just to say that uh, actually the investment that you will be putting in in studying in New Zealand goes to this qualification that is world class. Uh, another important element uh, of being a student in New Zealand is the opportunity to work part time while studying. Um, New Zealand offers this to international students in the context that they want to prepare the student. Remember uh, when we said future focused uh, in the initial um, welcome statement? Uh, New Zealand understands that. That's why they provide students that opportunity uh, to work part time while studying in the industry. That's basically simply putting your one foot in the, in the door of the industry that you will be working uh, after your, uh, the completion of your program. And of course, even without saying it, you earn from the part-time work as, uh, as Brian mentioned earlier. Uh, and therefore, uh, what you earn from uh, the part-time work will definitely help somehow in the living cost, uh, in accommodation, uh, in food, and in uh, transportation. And uh, in the most recent years, New Zealand has been uh, very supportive of international students because uh, all the schools, I can say nearly all the schools in New Zealand, would provide internship uh, and industry training, which is a component of the learning. Again, this is in the context of uh, preparing the students uh, when they graduate, and so they will have a real understanding of how their particular industry works, and therefore they will be um, uh, work-ready graduates in the future. And one thing for those who are married and with children, it is very good to mention that there is benefits. Uh, there are benefits for your dependents, your spouse, uh, your partner, and then your children. Your spouse uh, can join you while you are studying in New Zealand, and they may actually uh, get a work visa status for them to be able to work while you are studying. Uh, and your children, if they are in the primary and secondary level, they may actually study as domestic students in New Zealand. But then again, I'd like to point out that this particular benefit only applies to certain level of uh, study in New Zealand, it does not apply to, to, to everyone. Um, and uh, another thing that I would like to focus on will be the full-time work after completion of the program. And this is again in the context that New Zealand wants you to be able to apply what you have learned from the classroom in an actual industry setting. New Zealand allows you to stay in New Zealand after you graduate for a minimum of one year to a maximum of three years under what we call as the post-study work visa. It is an opportunity for you to really apply what you have learned from the university or, or from your school uh, into the actual workplace. Uh, and of course, uh, after that, after you have established yourself in a good job, with the right salary, with the, with the right job, with the right support from the employer, you may actually apply for permanent residency in New Zealand. And that includes the whole of your family, your spouse, and then your children. Again, in the context that New Zealand is a family-centered society. And um, the second to my last slide would be 
again, a quick information for you guys how us, GSIC, can help you in your objective of studying in New Zealand. Uh, again, I'd like to mention a few things here. We have been in the business for 16 years uh, and we started in 2004. And as a matter of fact, we will be celebrating our 16th year anniversary on the 3rd of November. That's a few days from now. We have nine offices in the Philippines uh, from Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao in Luzon. We have North Luzon, Cavite, uh, Manila, and in the Visayas, uh, we have Cebu, which is where I hold office. This is our central office. In Bacolod, in Iloilo, and in Mindanao, you have uh, Davao, Cagayan de Oro, and General Santos City. And uh, we are um, proud to just share that we have the most number of approved uh, student visa applications uh, since uh, 2015 up to 2019 with a very high uh, approval rating of up to 98%. We are an Education New Zealand recognized agency. There are very few agencies in the Philippines that would have this category. And of course, my name is Joel Angon. I am the licensed immigration advisor of Golden Summit. And you can be assured that all your documents, all the assessment of your uh, eligibilities to study in New Zealand will go through me and I will be working on those documents. And uh, just to close, if you would have um, more inquiries, more questions after this presentation, uh, you can check out our website, that's www.goldensummitph.com uh, or send your inquiries to inquiry at goldensummitph.com. Franco, I don't know if we have time to uh, play the video. Otherwise, uh, we can proceed. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. But I think we're running a little late. Uh, so we'll, we'll have to hold the video for now. Uh, but anyway, we still have more time with Sir Joel. Uh, I have two more follow-up questions for you. So the first one is, uh, how is New Zealand different from other study abroad destinations in the world? I think specifically in regards like to the Philippines. Well, uh, top of mind, I would say that the best reason why New Zealand is different from many other study abroad destinations is the fact that it is a safe and welcoming community. New mm -hmm. Zealand actually rank, uh, rank as the most peaceful uh, English-speaking country in the world. This is via the 2020 Global Peace Index, which, uh, which compares 163 countries in the world. And New Zealand, as a matter of fact, has been holding this uh, ranking in the past 10 years. Uh, also, New Zealand offers education in an inquiry-based uh, method. Uh, New Zealand teaching encourages students to ask questions, to work as a team, and to learn from project-based um, uh, activities. And these projects are not confined in the four corners of the classroom. As a matter of fact, they encourage students to get out of the classroom mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, to museums, uh, to art galleries, to mountains, beaches, and forests, so that they can see for themselves how the, what the, the opportunity to understand real world implications of mm -hmm. what they are studying inside the classroom. And as, uh, as we all know, the brand of New Zealand education is Think New, because creativity and innovation are at the heart of the New Zealand education. And lastly, I'd like to uh, focus on the work-ready graduates. N students in New Zealand uh, gain qualification that is recognized worldwide. So this becomes their passport to success. And the skills that uh, they learn in New Zealand are transferable internationally which allows them to apply what they learned in New Zealand across many different cultures, customs, and borders, making them truly internationally ready individuals, creative, analytical, independent, and world-class. Awesome. Okay. Um, that was well said, Sir Joel. Uh, I think we have one last question before we wrap everything up. Once again, how can students find out more about studying in New Zealand? Where should they go? I think I already know okay. the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you can you can go to us, Golden Summit Immigration Consultancy. Golden if Summit. you can save that last slide, uh, where yes. you have some uh, websites uh, that may be good for the listen the, the individuals listening in to write down these things. Uh, I I would encourage them to check out 
www.studyinnewzealand.govt.nz. Uh, uh, you will have a, a whole lot of information in that website. You may also want to check out www.iaa.govt.nz. And of course, uh, if you want to know general information about migration in New Zealand, uh, you may check out www.immigration.govt.nz. I will be more than willing to answer questions after this event. So please send in your questions to inquiry at goldensummitph.com. Salamat po. Okay, there you go. We have uh, hopefully we got your we have your contact details on screen. So please reach out to Sir Joel for more help on the application process. Uh, I think that's all the time we have for today. So to our 52 viewers right now, thank you so much for participating, commenting, and tuning in to the second episode of Think New, um, the New Zealand Education Webinar. And then of course, uh, I would like to give an extra special thank you to all of our wonderful panelists today. So we have Ben McNally Byrne from University of Auckland. Okay, virtual round of applause, everyone. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have Brian Bonavi from Masi University. Yuki Fukui from University of Otago. Clap, 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 clap. <laughs> Jiang Nguyen from University of Waikato. And of course, the fan favorite, uh, <laughs> Mr. Joel Angon from Golden Summit Immigration Consultancy. Thank you. Clap, 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 clap. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, everyone, in the comment section and, of course, all of our wonderful panelists. Okay, so if you missed the first episode, and you're just tuning in uh, now to the second episode, don't worry. We're going to have this episode on replay for everyone. So all you have to do is you have to go to the education.ph Facebook page and then check, it, check out the uh, episode one and this episode two on our video section. So we have just dropped the link uh, for this video in the comment section below. So feel free to check out episode one and episode two. Uh, and don't worry if you still miss us, we're going to have another episode uh, of uh, Think New on November 14, 2020. Uh, yes, this year, November 14, this year at 3 p.m. So make sure to book that in your calendars. And then we're going to have another set of reps for that episode. Um, there, we're going to have guests from different institutes of technology and polytechnics from New Zealand as well. So we are going to be dropping the registration link below for webinar three. So you guys can receive uh, reminders for webinar three. Once again, that will be on November 14th at 3 p.m. Okay, so I think the link is there. Please register. Once again, this is Kuya Brother Franco. And see you all again for our next episode of Think New, the New Zealand Education Webinar. Thank you again, everybody. Have a great Saturday. Uh, see you soon. Thanks, Franco. Stay Thank safe. You, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Okay, I think we're good. Thank you, everyone. We realize that high school, college, even a first job can seem scary. That's why we created education.ph to equip them with tools, connect them to schools, find scholarships learn online, match their skills to courses and jobs out there. So their future wouldn't be as scary. Education.ph Our world, our world is, changing. is changing. And our world, and our world needs, new. needs new. Because new because doesn't, new just, doesn't think just think about the world's, about the world's problems. problems. It cares. It cares. New X boldly, boldly to, solve, to challenges, solve challenges, but never, but never forget the importance, the importance of, people. of people. It just opens, it just opens my, eyes, my eyes to a much, a much wider, wider opportunities. opportunities. New, is new is prepared for today, for today and ready, and to, ready create to create tomorrow. tomorrow. I learned about, about identity, 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 about myself. About myself. New welcomes, new welcomes open, open minds and different, and different perspectives. The thing that surprised me the most is the diversity of culture here. New is progressive, new is progressive and never, and never stops, stops learning. learning. Qualifications, Qualifications are recognized, recognized worldwide. Wide. New is the new problem, is the problem solvers, solvers, the go-getters, the, go the innovators, the, innovators, the big thinkers. The big thinkers. New, new is a New Zealand, is a new Zealand education. education. And new and is new what the is world needs.
Why choose New Zealand education? Because New Zealand's education system is world class. It provides a multicultural environment. Employment directed learning, internships, and part time and full time work options while studying. And most importantly, New Zealand is one of the safest countries in the world to study, work, and eventually settle. Talk to GSIC, or Golden Summit Immigration Consultancy, for free today, to know the documents and funds required, application process and time frame, and best courses for you. We have been in the New Zealand study and migration consultancy industry for over 16 years now. We have the most number of student visa approvals from 2015 to 2019 with very high approval ratings up to 98%. We have cost-effective fees. We attribute this to our many years of experience and expertise, coupled with our inherent focus on quality. We have thousands of approved visa applications already. We're one of Education New Zealand recognized agencies. Most importantly, we are represented by our own in-house New Zealand licensed immigration advisor. So, what are you waiting for? Check out our website www.goldensummitph.com or forward your inquiries to inquiry at goldensummitph.com. We realize that high school, college, even a first job can seem scary. That's why we created Educacion.ph to equip them with tools, connect them to schools, find scholarships, learn online, match their skills to courses and jobs out there. So their future wouldn't be as scary. Educacion.ph